Are you a man looking for an intensive program to help you overcome sexually addictive behaviors? Gateway to Freedom is your answer. Gateway to Freedom is a three-day workshop for men seeking to overcome any destructive sexual habits. Whether married, single, or divorced, Gateway to Freedom will help men regain hope for a new life of purity and real contentment. The workshop is conducted by experts in the field of sexual addiction recovery with decades of combined experience. Read testimonials of workshops alumni at gatewaymen.com get all the info and register online at gatewaymen.com or call 1-800-49-PURITY hi my name is jonathan and i'm the founder of the gateway to freedom workshop i want to personally invite you to be part of our next workshop coming up december 2nd through the 4th in texas so call us today at 210-822-8201 or visit gatewaymen.com Welcome to Pure Sex Radio, training men, educating women. Are you ready to get real and start living each day in purity? This dynamic program is designed to educate, encourage, and equip listeners with the tools necessary for living a life of sexual purity. Pure Sex Radio brings you the best in mobile talk radio. Listen to real life struggles, learn how to overcome lust, pornography, and sex addiction, and get serious about purity. Your hosts for Pure Sex Radio are Jonathan Doherty and Stephen Cervantes. Jonathan is the director of Be Broken Ministries and founder of the Gateway to Freedom Workshop for Men. Stephen is the founder of the Hope Counseling Center. Visit us online at puresexradio.com. And now, please welcome Jonathan and Stephen on Pure Sex Radio. Good day, radio listeners. Welcome to this edition of the Pure Sex Radio Broadcast. My name is Jonathan Darty. I'm here with Stephen Cervantes. How are you today? I'm blessed. Thank you. Awesome. Well, folks, as we um, get ready to share with you this week's podcast, I wanted to let you know that we have one final workshop, uh, Gateway to Freedom workshop, that's coming this year. It's going to be December 2nd through the 4th in Texas, uh, just north of San Antonio. And so it's the last workshop of this year. So guys, if you are um, struggling or you you just want to overcome your sexual struggles and strongholds, this is a great resource. We've had hundreds of men throughout the year that have come, uh, or actually not throughout the year, but throughout the years that have uh, come to this workshop and just gotten the help they need to just dig down to the deeper issues, to recognize it's not only about changing behavior, it's about having a completely transformed life. If you'd like to learn more about the workshop and how you can get plugged into this one, uh, simply go to gatewaymen.com and you can find out more about that. And so, Stephen, actually this week we are going to be talking about the Gateway Workshop, but um, really from guys that have attended. And just why don't you share with us um, kind of where we're going to go. Well, you and I were talking, uh, it's a list of comments that Gateway Men shared with us and gave us permission to share. But, you know, I'm wondering, are we two warped guys sitting around here? We pull other guys' pain out. It's it's pulled out in terms of statements. But here we are pulling each other's guts out and poking and prodding and looking inside a man that's struggling and and we're having a great time. You and I are just having a good old time poking around inside men. You know what, though? As soon as you said that, I thought of, uh, have you ever, there was a series that the BBC did a couple of years ago called Planet Earth. I don't know if you ever saw it. No, it incredible. I, I mean, just they did all different kinds of things about like, you know, wildlife and seas and mountains and all this kind of stuff. And I was watching one recently. And a lot of the a lot of stuff, especially when they were dealing with like the the rainforests and jungles and things like that, is they do these time lapse videos where you're seeing a uh, a plant, you know, or a tree sprout or whatever, and yes. then you know you're seeing it over time. The thing that I noticed in every single one of those time lapse when there's some kind of growth happening is even in the time lapse you can see the struggle, like to get through the soil and then to climb up the the walls of these other trees and then to try to break through to the light and even in the even in this fast you know time lapse you're seeing 
I mean, you're you're kind of you find yourself going, "Come on, plan, you can make it." You know, what I mean, and I think sometimes what we're doing here when we share about the stuff that these guys have shared with us in the Gateway is we're we're getting to see some of that time lapse of they're breaking through, they're they're struggling, yes. and yes. and so while it may seem in the moment like if you weren't watching it in time lapse, you'd go, "Well, that plant's never going to make it." <laughs> But then it's like as it continues to strain toward the light, I think that's the encouragement that I think some people can take away from when we oh, share good. these things. Is it's like this is what it means to strain toward the light, you know, to mm. to keep pressing through. And I'm thinking about salmon fishing, you know, salmon jump up these waterfalls and they fight up. Oh, yeah. They fight to get somewhere, you know. And so, okay, there is joy in the struggle, right? So we're encouraging people to keep fighting, keep, keep pressing keep toward the light. And- so what we try to do is deconstruct so we can reconstruct better. That's mm-hmm. what all these comments are about. And we hope you're sitting out there and that one or two of these thoughts will just move you, maybe flush up one of your comments Maybe a lie that you believed, uh, a story you haven't remembered, but we're trying to move towards health, and um, we're called to be clean and free and innocent and light, Mm -hmm. and that's what we're promised. Um, That's what our design is for, and that's what we'll be in the presence of God, and so we're trying to be that now, move Mm -hmm. to that a little bit, stretch, grow, reach. So, first comment was, I don't really have very many relationships, um, but porn is always there. Porn is always calling me to relationship. Porn is my universal friend, fallback, safety net, security. Porn is my friend. You know what, as I see that and as I hear that, I think that makes me think there was a movie a few years ago uh, Bruce Willis was in called Surrogates. And it's essentially this movie, and it's kind of, it's a little eerie because it feels kind of like where our world is going in terms of living kind of in a virtual reality. Mm-hmm. It, essentially, the premise of the movie was it gotten to the point where, listen, the world is too dangerous to live in actually. So we just need people to stay in their homes nice and safe, and then we'll create these surrogate like robots that look exactly like human beings, but they can essentially control them, you know, digitally from their homes. <laughs> oh, wow. Does it sound like social media? Anyway, <laughs> and I so I hear that and I think that is kind of the world we're starting to live in. It's like, I don't have relationships. Why? You know what? Porn sometimes seems easier. Yeah. There doesn't seem to be the same kind of quote unquote dangers with with having a relationship with porn because I can kind of stay in my home. I don't have to really deal with the difficulties of another human being's mess and brokenness and all. Yeah. I can just kind of I can still keep everything focused on me and it's nice, neatly packaged. You know, I can stay safe and mm. and so I think we're sliding in that direction of thinking that virtual is better than the real. Um, and so that's kind of what I saw when I, yeah. when I heard that. Along with that, when the men said, I have a lot of loneliness. I spend a lot of time just sitting by myself. And I'm, I, I'm too isolated. But that's my world. And, you know, think about some of these guys that are just doing computers, do computer work all day. They, they just sit and they're isolated. But they want a relationship. They want better connections. So sometimes our jobs lead to isolation. And so we have to fight through that I, disconnection and isolation. And I have to share with you a little bit of my story along these lines, because I, I'm I'm naturally an introvert, so I get recharged and rejuvenated actually through being um, in solitude and, and, you know, being alone. But as a result of my addiction, what would happen is I felt this very much a lot, very lonely, very isolated. And one of the fears that I had in going into recovery was everybody was talking about community, community, you got to be in community. And it just terrified me because I thought I will never be an extrovert. I'm never going to be that quote unquote connected. I'm never going to be that out there. And and I had this fear that, that what this meant was that um, there can be no solitude in my life. Mm. You thought, always have like to be 100%, out and on. Hundred percent. You got to be on all the time. You got to yeah. be in. You got to be in community, connected. And, all. and I've come to, thankfully, over the years, I've come to realize that while 
I have learned what it means to be in healthy relationships. I have actually learned also how to thrive in my introvertism and in and knowing how to have that balance between healthy solitude where I can actually be alone and and I can I'll even use this word isolated, but I'm not in an unhealthy position. Yes. So it's like I want to encourage the introverts out there That's that are good. going I feel lonely and isolated to think that recovery doesn't mean you're going to have to change your personality or and, and become an extrovert. It means that you've got to learn how to connect in authentic, real ways that you're not hiding who you are from, from people who are close to you. And I think we're going to be alone. At times, yeah. we're just going to be alone. And can you do alone very well? Can you be healthy in Absolutely. your alone? Can yeah. you be still? Can you be quiet? Can you enjoy yourself? God, can you be at rest? Can you stay calm in just being alone? Mm-hmm. Lots of life involves aloneness. It does, yeah. And there are times when we are disconnected. So we want to connect well and then be alone well. And and I would also add this to it. One of the things that I learned in recovery that's been the most, one of the most refreshing things along the lines of this idea of loneliness and isolation is early on in my recovery, I had a a fear, maybe that's even a light word, I had a terror of being alone because hmm. I had such a long history of not doing aloneness very well. Folks out there, if if you will go through this process and you will really engage recovery in a way that says, I want to learn how to be in healthy relationships, and, and essentially the, the issue here is just being not being hidden. I want to go through that process. The good news is you can get to a place where you're no longer afraid of being alone. Yes. It's like if I know that, let's say my wife is going to go on a you know teacher conference or something, and I know I'm going to be alone for a couple of days. Well, good grief. Before my recovery started, I would have been both terrified and thrilled. I would have been thrilled because it'd be like, oh, God, I can go do all these stupid things, terrified because I'm going to go all do all these stupid things, you know? <laughs> or be alone and in and there's, terror. And there's no, there's so much discontent and so much, mm. you know, yes. um, there's no peacefulness. So the good news is you don't have to be afraid of being alone anymore. And that's a process that you can learn. Yes. And we talked about training your brain. Yeah. And so to say that, I, I want to be alone with myself well. Mm-hmm. That's a mission, right? And then just practicing, sitting in the presence of God, bringing yourself to rest, right? It's a skill. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's a difficult skill because there's always a TV on, there's always a phone ringing, and there's, oh, you know what I mean? Everything's fast and entertainment driven. It's like, let's be alone well. And I want to be clear, yes. Alone, uh, and I'm going to put this in a different term. Solitude doesn't mean that you simply are not around people. Because if you've got a television on, if the radio's playing, if it, oh, right, in other words, right. solitude means I am okay with being in my own presence yes. and in the presence of God. Meaning, God I can, and I are enough. I'm not being distracted at this moment. Yeah, that's right. I it's, can just be in yeah. myself, and I can have a dialogue. I can be quiet. I can tell him I don't like quiet, or quiet's good, or, but I don't have to flood with negative, with shame, dialogue, self condemnation. You know, flood with fear, brokenness, desperation to run away to something to distract you from you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we started out that way as little boys, if you think about it. We were clean and fresh and we were little and we were going to discover the world, right? And we've lost some of that innocence and the ability to just be in discovery, be curious. Mm -hmm. Because we run over to this crud and just muck ourselves up and then go, well, Well, was I supposed to sit there? Yeah, no, partly you're just supposed to sit there sometimes in life and be at peace. Yeah. So the next comment was, you know, I don't know how to have a healthy relationship with a woman. It's funny. I can hear a teenager saying that. I can hear a middle-aged man saying, I don't know how to have a relationship with a woman. I can hear an older man saying, I don't know how to have a relationship with a woman. Sex, okay, that's biology, working parts, right? But to have a relationship, to understand intimacy, to press into oneness, to create a safe place for our differences. And and I would say that statement is the first step to having a healthy relationship with a woman. It's just making that confession. It's right? just saying, because here's, the, here's what we do, I, and I've done this so many times. I make this assumption that I should know. Have you ever done that? 
Yes. Yeah. That's like a shame statement. I should know that you should. Yeah. You should. You know? And 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 also, I'll I'll go a step further. There's many wives out there that make the assumption Ooh, you should that their know husband this. should you know. Should. Somebody should have taught you this. You should. You're a man. You should. And so I think we should. Let's just take a moment to just you know, like blow up that and say, let's just all confess. Um, there's a lot of men out there that simply don't know how to have a healthy relationship with a woman. And when that confession takes place, let's all take a deep breath and go, that's okay. And can the wives confess that's a, too? That's a starting point. I don't point. Yeah. understand men and they're difficult. I don't have a relationship with them. Yeah. I don't get it. So at whatever point we have told ourselves, I should know that, when we actually don't know that, let's just admit, I don't know that. I don't know how to do that. You, and when you do that, then the next question is, but I, our statement, I can learn. Yeah. I don't know. Anything you don't know is an open door to learning. Yeah. Right, but it's that honest confession, and and I think the 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 thing here, uh, maybe this is, should be a little disclaimer or a little caveat for the wives out there is is if and when your husband does confess to this idea of I don't know how to have a healthy relationship with a woman, um, don't immediately go into training mode of like, well, here's the forty seven <laughs> things that I could tell you right now that because that Just say will, thank you that will give poorly. <laughs> Give him a hug and say thank you. That confession is huge, right? Let him let him admission is let him breathe deeply for a few days and then let's start the training then, you know. So one of the men came up and said, Hey, hey, I keep trying to correct my behavior and it doesn't work. But but I keep trying to correct my own behavior and I, I can't seem to correct my behavior. I'm confused by this. I mean, I, I, I kind of get the statement, but I'm wondering what was behind, like, was he, um, was it one of those, was it another one of those things of like, I, I should know how to behave. And so I, I just, I keep correcting. And I know the right thing to do, but I don't do it. And I keep trying and failing and I keep trying to correct myself. I keep, I keep trying to will myself, talk myself, should myself into. Mm-hmm. And, and I tell you, um, Maybe the way I would respond to this guy is to say, "Man, I'm I'm encouraged by how many times you've gotten up." Yes, that's good. Because maybe he's, getting up. you know, if he's probably under the, such a weight of shame, because he's probably carrying very much a perfectionistic mindset towards his struggle, that he's probably not had anybody celebrate the work he's done. Mm. Maybe nobody affirm him in the times that he's gotten up and tried again. Yeah. And sometimes, and because and it's probably something, it's obviously something that he's not looked at himself, because if he's only looking at correction, 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 he's only looking at the failure, right? Yes. So if somebody, and this is a good maybe note for listeners out there, when somebody comes and confesses, and they confess again, and then they confess again, and they confess again, I know, especially if it's in a marriage relationship, man, I know firsthand that that is can be ugly and difficult and painful and heavy. But maybe if we just try this, and I know there's going to be wives that reach through the, the mic right now and want to strike me. <laughs> if we try to look for what is worth celebrating in that confession. I, some, mm, I think sometimes the yes. confession alone is something worth celebrating. Say, this yes. is a person that's still willing to get up, to keep going, to bring stuff into the light. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe it's not, you know, maybe it's not the wife that specifically celebrates that, but maybe she encourages him to, that's great, go keep plugging into your group, keep getting with your men or whatever. But I, I think sometimes we're, we're, we're so focused on either the pain that it's caused us or the failure that we have committed mm. that we don't necessarily see the goodness in continuing to try, continuing to work. That's good. Anybody that gets up. Right. Anybody that's trying, anybody that's confessing, Mm -hmm. our first thing is thank you, attaboy. Don't ever quit. Don't ever give up. I I don't know how many times I've heard in these groups men say, my parents never said I love you. Mm -hmm. You know, a mother would never say to her son, I love you. Our father wouldn't say to a son, I love you. And those are broken people, right? From pain, they can't extend the blessing. But I think we should say that right now. I think we should say, I'll say to the boys, you say to the girls, okay? Mm-hmm. So every boy out there that's never heard, I love you, and I want to stand in the gap. I want to stand mm-hmm. for your father right now and and say that you are loved. I love you. Mm-hmm. The very spirit in me connects with your spirit. 
the very fact that I'm made in the image of the Creator and so are you, then I say love flows from me to you. I love you. Know that you're loved. And let the the Holy Spirit affirm that in you right now and just use me as a as a vessel, a vehicle to deliver the message that you're a good son and that you've done lots of good and that you're loved. Mm. You know, I have two daughters and so I, I'm very familiar with and Stephen you are too, but I'm very familiar with just the the unfiltered joy and beauty and and just delight that a little girl can have and and I think so many times that can just be that can just be squelched and and that that blooming flower can just be crushed mm. by the, but not not maybe by words but by lack mm. of words and so if you are a daughter out there I don't care what your age is if you're a daughter out there yes. and you missed out on those words from your dad, from from the, the one who was meant to speak your identity into your mm-hmm. life and give you a sense of that worth and that value. I wanna I wanna stand in the gap as as a surrogate father, as yes. one who can say on the behalf of your heavenly father that mm-hmm. you are loved. I yes. love you. You are worthy, you are cherished, you are wanted. Mm-hmm. And I just want that affection Receive. of pure love to just flow over you now and let those words, I Receive. love you, really sink deeply into your soul Receive. from one, from a father who cares Release and from a father who pain. wants you to know deep in your soul that that is true. Release anything blocking. Just release it and receive mm. these words. You are loved. You are lovely. Mm. You are good. You are made in the image of God and you are good. So let it be in Jesus' name. Amen. So, shifting out, one of the guys said, I hide in plain sight. Man, that is a great Isn't statement. that a great line? I had to write that thing down. <laughs> I hide in plain sight. Oh, man. And you know what? I think, I think m- most men who develop any kind of a sexual addiction, they become masters at that. Mm. Um. I've even known of men who learn to act out in various ways while in a crowd of people, you know, so just the idea of being able to be unseen, Mm. even around people. And I think this idea of hiding in plain sight is really fits into what we talk about at the workshop about being an image builder and learning how to project exactly the right image in whatever Mm. context you're in so that nobody really knows what you're about. Nobody really knows you. And so I think we become very good deceivers. And, and, you know, I don't know what this means. Am I hiding um, and so that nobody sees me? Or am I hiding from you? You know, I'm hiding because it's the only thing I know to do. I'm hiding. I know I'm in your sight. Mm -hmm. Am I hiding so you don't see me? Or am I hiding? It's sort of funny I don't want you to see me. Let me be in the room, but pretend I'm not there. Mm -hmm. I'm hiding. And it's just like, everybody knows you're hiding. You're in the room, but you're not present. You're not hiding. We see you. Yeah. But but in his mentality, he's like, if I can be small and, and get back and step back in the shadows. Dad, you're in the shadows. Your body's here. You're not here, Dad. You're not hiding. Isn't it sort of well, a and, weird? And you know what? It's interesting to me that you say that because how many times have we heard men say this to us, and women too, they say to us that, uh, well, you know, my dad was, he was in the home, but he wasn't really there. Yes, that's another so, one we hear a lot. So here's the thing is that, that father was fooling himself thinking because, hey, my butt's in the house, then they're going to, I'm being a good dad because I'm, I'm quote unquote here. Doing what I'm supposed to be. I'm here. And yet those kids always know better. They know my dad's here, but he's not here. He's not available. Yeah, he's not, not, present, not engaging, you know? not present, not real, not telling us about life. You know, the one thing I'd say to fathers is, you know, I never understood. I love my father. He's passed now. Why he didn't tell me what he knew. Mm. I mean, okay, Dad, you didn't know everything. I get it. I don't know everything. But at least tell me what you know, because that'll give me half of the push I need. 
Mm -hmm. Life is scary and it's hard and we get tired and we get lonely and sex is, sexuality is difficult and manhood is difficult. Just tell me your, the, what you know. And you know what? As a little sidebar, I'll share with you something that I've started having man meetings with my son when he turned 13 to just say, hey, let's start just trying to help you grow into manhood and all this. And so one of the things that I'll do periodically is I will ask him, I'll say, hey, what questions do you have about life? You know, mm. about about what it's like to drive or, you know, how do you handle money or whatever. Now, some of these I will pre I will preemptively deal with the question because I'm like, I know these questions are coming up. Yes. But others, I'll just be like, wherever he is in life, just what are your questions about anything? Yeah. Just and be of, 13 with him. Some be of those 14, are cool be fit, right, yeah. conversations because we can assume what we think our kids have questions about. Right. But unless you ask them, you don't know what the actual questions are. And sometimes, mm. sometimes we're thinking on a whole different plane than they are. And we realize that some of the questions they have to us seem very simple and basic. And we're going, well, man, I've just assumed <laughs> you, that knew, you that. knew that, you know, <laughs> but we need to ask that because it's like, they need to know that they need to hear that from their dad. I find myself repeating the statement. Uh, I can't do this. This is hard. I can't do it. I don't want to do it. Do I have to do this? Mm -hmm. Really? This adulthood thing. This, you know, I saw a t-shirt said, I don't want to adult. I can't adult today. <laughs> I can't adult today. It's like, do I have to do this really hard things? Be disciplined. Be good. Mm -hmm. Again today. I did it yesterday. Do I have to do it again today? You know, I actually think this statement is closer brings us closer to being a man or woman of integrity than the idea of saying I can do this um, and the reason I say that is because I think now I understand maybe the context in which this person is saying this of um, it might be more of like I see all that lies ahead in terms of what this journey requires mm, yes and it more, more might more accurately be stated I don't want to do this <laughs> <laughs> but the statement as it's phrased here, I can't do this. I think that's a beautiful statement of surrender. Of saying, you know what? I maybe am carrying things that I, I wasn't meant to carry. Yeah. Maybe I'm trying to do things that I, I can't do. Those are things that I need the power of God in me. I need the help of others alongside me, bearing my burdens with me. And so some of it is just try to recognize which of this is confession and a statement of surrender and which is this... I simply don't want to do hard things and ask yourself yes. you know, kind of where that line is. That's good because I think it means both of those things you're talking about. I can't do this. No, I don't want to. And then it's I got fit. God, yeah. I can't do this. Lord, help me, Lord. Mm -hmm. That's good. So um, some days I think to myself, God's not punishing me enough. He's not punishing me enough. So I help him. Oh, my goodness. And I just this call is... myself names and tell me, say what an idiot and how stupid I am and mm. just, you know, sort of wail on myself. Man, this is so heavy with shame. Mm. Just even the idea of thinking that God is or should be punishing him. Now, I don't want to get too sidetracked with a the theological aspect there in terms of, you know, sin and the wrath of God and those kind of things. But in terms of our understanding of the forgiveness of God that we have in Jesus, mm -hmm. our journey through this life is not one of God seeking to punish us. Mm. And that is, um, and so the idea of this sort of punitive, almost, uh, I think oftentimes of the, you know, the, the idea of whipping myself or, you know, just kind of serving penance and doing those kind of things. That's a mentality that is saying that the burden for the uh, payment for my sins is on me. Yes. When in fact, the burden for the payment for our sins is on Jesus. Mm. And so we have to be set free from that Amen. sense of, of punishment in order that we can understand that there is a, a God who is desiring our best. He's desiring us to move forward and not to punish us. That's good. That's yeah. really good. I think these comments have been open and honest, full of pain and sadness. And so we invite you to leave them at the foot of the cross. Mm -hmm. You know, someone was saying everything, 
is under Christ's feet. He yeah. crushed the serpent. So we take these negative, painful things and we put them at the feet of Jesus. And hopefully these comments will help you, like we mentioned in the very first part of this segment, to strain toward the light, to continue to struggle upward in your growth. And if you'd like some more help along your journey, please contact us. And we look forward to having you back here again next week on the Pure Sex Radio broadcast. Pure Sex Radio is paid for by Be Broken Ministries. Visit us online at puresexradio.com.